Here's a little tip for you YouTube if you want to work out the stiffness of a suspension spring. Maybe these are old and you need to replace them or you want to try a stiffer or a softer spring but you don't know what your starting point is. Now you can get your fat bird to stand on them while you try and measure the deflection with a ruler but there is a much more easy and more accurate way of doing it and all you're going to need for that is a set of vernier calipers and a calculator. You can use this method on any constant rate spring, that's any spring for which the stiffness is the same no matter how much the spring is compressed. And you can tell that this is a constant rate spring because the distance between the coils is the same all the way up. Now the other type of spring you get is what's called progressive or rising rate springs and with those the distance between the coils will reduce as you go towards one end of the spring and they give you a constantly changing stiffness as the spring is compressed. Now you can still use this method for progressive springs but what you'll get is a sort of average value of that constantly changing spring stiffness which may not be what you want but for constant rate springs like this you can get a very accurate estimate of the spring stiffness just from two simple measurements. The first of those is the diameter of the wire. So clean any rust or thick coatings off so you're back to bare metal and then use your calipers to measure the diameter of the wire in millimetres. And you might want to take a few readings in order to establish an average. And for this spring that value is 13.4 millimetres. And then write that value down for use later. The second measurement that you need to make is the outside diameter of the coils. Now, springs are usually wound around a mandrel, which means that they tend to taper towards one end. So, make a few measurements on each end and take an average of those. And the average of this coil is 111 millimetres, so record that as outside diameter. And from those measurements work out the mean coil diameter, which is simply the outside diameter minus the wire diameter, which in this case is 111mm minus 13.4mm, which is 97.6mm, isn't it? Then we need to work out how many active coils of wire we've got in the spring. So starting at the bottom, count the number of coils as you go upwards. So starting at the bottom we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then if you look on the top there's another half a coil of wire to finish it off. So there's a total of 8.5 coils of wire. But almost all suspension springs have what's called closed and ground ends like this. And that means that this end, the closed and ground end, doesn't contribute to the spring at all. It's just a spring seat. So we need to subtract 2 from our total number of coils for these two closed and ground ends which aren't contributing to the springing at all. So that's eight and a half of the total number of coils minus the two closed and ground ends gives us a number of active coils of six and a half. If you've been thinking this is easy and you don't need the calculator then this is what you need the calculator for because the stiffness is 9913 times d, little d, to the power 4, over n, the number of active coils, times the mean coil diameter, big D, cubed. So for those of you who didn't get your maths O-level, that means d to the 4 means that's little d times little d times little d times little d. And this, big D cubed, is big D times big D times big D. Alright? Which works out the stiffness of 52.5. Eight nine newtons per millimetre. What per what? That's right, Tobe. I said newtons per millimetre. If you wanted in the more familiar unit of pound force per inch, then times that number by five point seven, which in this case equals three hundred and one point five pound force per inch. And that spring, which is the front suspension spring off a of Lotus Elan, is nominally £300 per inch. So you can see we are pretty much bang on the money there, just by a couple of simple measurements and a bit of calculation. Now, a couple of final parting comments. This number, this constant, 9913, that is related to the shear modulus of the steel that your spring is made out of. And it does vary a little bit depending on exactly which type of steel your spring is made from. However, the range of values for that number is from about 9910 to about 9920. So the error you're introducing by not knowing exactly what type of steel your spring is made from is absolutely tiny. If you go wrong with these calculations, it is much more likely to be because of a slight inaccuracy in your measurements of these two values that we took right at the start. 
And finally, look after your springs and don't let them get too rusty. Because if you rerun these calculations, taking just a quarter of a millimetre off that average wire diameter at the top there, you'll find that the stiffness of this spring goes down by over 7.5%. So springs don't get soft with age necessarily because the material properties have changed over time. It's often just because the wire's been thinned by rusting. So keep the under seal topped up on your springs and they'll continue to keep you off the road. See you next time.